All right, we're up. Good evening, uh, gentle furs, and evening, uh, damn it, <laughs> your volume. Sorry, yes, I got the volume it's like three times. Well, that's... Good evening, gentle furs, and uh, lady furs. Racco, when I'm talking to you, um, <laughs> welcome to the South Africa for a podcast. Uh, here at 8 p.m. in South Africa. Uh, what time is it there in um, Brazil at the moment? It's 4 p.m. 4 p.m. in Brazil. Um, as you yes. can now tell, we actually have a Brazilian fur with us called Fox T. You can see his po uh, photo there on the um, stream thingy. On the stream uh, picture there. Uh, joining us again is obviously myself, Scratch, Sub, and Inapa. Hello. Or Anpu. Nah, both. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yeah. I just need to find some picture here. What picture can I put up? Because otherwise the stream is boring. Do yourself a favor and put up a picture about uh, Brazilian soccer furries. <laughs> oh! oh. Who, who yeah, was, good one. Good one. Who, who was the, who was the uh, mascot this year? Uh, the Brazilian was world... A, a pussy? Uh, it, <laughs> it's called. Uh, let let me let me tell you a story about the the Brazilian mascot this year. It's it's, uh, it's uh, a pangolin, isn't it? Or it's a uh, how do you say? It's an it's like an armadillo, and his name actually means asshole. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Come again for big fudge? Exactly. His name is Fleco, and his name actually means asshole. Was that like a, a a crowd voted thing? I don't know. I don't know. I think our govern uh, our government decided that Fuleco sounded um, like friendly, a friendly name. Uh, but I, they I, didn't dig that up enough, and so they named the mascot Fuleco or asshole. <laughs> well, I, I mean that, that does remind us of like our World Cup, where um, the, of no, it wasn't the World Cup. It was the. Uh, was it the Olympics where it looked like uh, the Simpsons? No. No. Yes, it was our World Cup that the World Cup looked like somebody face palming. The the end. Oh, oh. No, no, no. That was the soccer World Cup last year. <laughs> yeah. Was that? Was that, that one? <laughs> what was ours? I remember that there was one that we. We, uh, we had Zakumi. It was a leopard. Yeah, we had no, no, the I'm leopards. Not the, I'm not talking about the mascot, right? I'm talking about the emblem itself. So I know oh. that there was an emblem. I think it was the the, the British Olympics, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where it looked like it was Bart Simpson getting a blowjob from Lisa Simpson. Oh. What? <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. 2012. Oh. Oh, that was the um, uh, uh, London Olympics, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But it, it says here, I'm, uh, I'm on wiki now, uh, Fuleco is a portmanteau of the words football, which is football, and uh, ecologia, or ecology. So it's a mixture of those two. Well, in all fairness, even though they did that, it still, it still means asshole, apparently. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, it, but it why? Why did Apple. they change it? Why would they take that name? It's really weird. <laughs> Football uh, ecology. I, oh man. But no, man. <laughs> our our governments are insane. You know that uh, uh, the best mascot for soccer that is, uh, I think it was now the uh, the Brazil uh, soccer um, was. Japan. They actually chose yep. Pikachu. Yeah. As a soccer mascot. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, that's Pokemon so were nice. actually the official. Yeah, Pokemon were actually the official mascots of the Japanese soccer team in 2014. Zakumi kind of actually. Cool. Yeah, I'm. Cool though, I have to say. Yes, yeah. Zakumi was so. <laughs> so like you look at it and I'm like, oh my god, I want to hug that. And thing. when you see the Vivizella, you want to hit his face in. Bah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently. Just posted uh, the link to Sakumi on there. I'm uh, I'm I'm just digging up a little more about Fuleco. Uh, apparently, uh, his name was a fusion of soccer and ecology in Portuguese, which is futebol and ecologia. And when they got those together, Fuleco and and that means 
Oh, that's unfortunate. Anyways, enough about soccer. Tell us a little bit about your sonar. I, th I take it you're obviously a fox. Almost there. Um, <laughs> I always loved foxes, and my first persona was actually a fox. And Fox T is actually a, a not so creative name that gets yeah, a fox and my initial, and that's it. But um, my my first persona was actually a fox. I was like 12, and I had this hobby of go to collect art. You know, mm -hmm. not. Yes, clean and unclean art. And oh. yes. <laughs> and actually I entered the fandom by the back door like most of us and mm -hmm. I've been collecting art for like uh for a long time. Yes, for a long time. Uh, since I was 12 and I'm 27, so like 15 years mostly. Ish. Apparently. Okay. And uh yes, and and then I decided to start doing songs in 2008. And I started learning Fruit Loop Studio at a job where I was bored because everyone was in vacation and I was the only one going to the workplace. <laughs> <laughs> and and with me, I brought my laptop and started learning how to to Fruit Loops. So so that's what got me started in music. music, music and then um, a few years later, I uh, sorry. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, right after that, I, at that point, I had known many furry, furry artists uh, like Press Caravan, which is my all-time favorite. I know, I know him since he started Paul Comics. Uh, I actually said that to him once. And anyway, <laughs> and yes, uh, I have been uh, into the Sonic fandom and. I collected a lot of Sonic artwork back then, mm. and I started liking Paul Comics because they were doing Sonic art when some everyone else wasn't, and I, that's why I love <laughs> Paul Comics. Yeah, I know the Sonic fandom really, really well because I once built a, a, a little virtual representation of some kind of thrill ride, and I posted on YouTube, and I called it Sonic the Hedgehog, and these guys flooded. My my um my YouTube channel with comments and that's actually sort of how I got introduced into the fandom. Is I was like, wait, what the hell is all these people's thing? <laughs> Where the hell did this all these people come from, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh. So yeah, uh, that's cool. Cool thing. Um, one thing that I want to ask you is, any other? Uh, how many other? Uh, how big is the community in in, in Brazil for furries? Well, um, it started actually. It started to get big in 2000, and I'm just risking here. Uh, I'm gonna say that it started getting big like four years ago, which was when I got inside the Brazilian furry fandom. I didn't. Um, when I was a furry and I was younger, I didn't even know that we had furries in Brazil. And that sounds a lot like I South had, Africa. Mm. Yes, and. My introducing my introduction to the Brazilian furry fandom was a uh, was interesting because I was doing this game development post graduation course and mm -hmm. the guy next to me he was a furry and I didn't even know that and I was checking inside my I was checking my Newgrounds account to see the the progress of my songs and then that guy looked at my screen name and he was like hey I think this guy is a furry and then he asked me hey are you a furry I was like wow. How do you know that? And oh, well, your name. <laughs> and then, oh, okay. Are you a furry? Yes, I am a furry. And I was like, wow. So there are other furries in Brazil. And then he introduced me to the furry uh, Brazilian furry communities, and I'm inside ever since. And wow, I have met a lot of people. Mm. Do okay. you guys do you guys have like a, an official website that you use for like connection and things like that? We have uh, we have three. I'm gonna risk three because they are the ones I know. But I, we have three um, main communities. We have uh, Furry Brazil. Uh huh. We have Fauna Urbana, which is the guys from Abando. And there's uh, I think Red Moon is the third one. 
They are uh, three different groups, but that doesn't mean they don't talk to each other. They, no, they know each other. Uh, but I mean, what, yeah. what I was actually asking is that you guys have like a, a forum that you guys all talk on at the same time, because I know that in South Africa we uh, we actually have like uh, the ZFR forums, uh, which was created by like a whole bunch of very, very intrepid guys back in 2008. Um, and pretty much like that's how we all get connected together uh, in, in South Africa. Yeah, um, these three that I mentioned, they are actu actually forums and like, uh, how do I put it, an online community where people are able to chat and to exchange mm. messages, post mm. art, all that. So no overarching national like uh, website. Very Brazil. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's, yeah, this that's one national. Is, <laughs> yeah, and um, that. There are, there are some issues among some of the members of those communities, and that's that's why there are three different groups. <laughs> oh. You know the drama. You yes. know the drama. If this if this if our community continues to grow, we already actually have different platforms already, and nobody wants to mention it. But yes, we actually do. We have this groups on WhatsApp. Then we have the groups on the sites. Then we have IRC. So it's it's just a different chat mechanisms, and the forum obviously in, in the center of it. But the, the, you can already see some people going onto the one and not the other ones, and also because of the same drama, the same things. So yes. yeah, you slowly see how that actually starts. Now I can almost imagine the three forums spouting up. <laughs> it won't surprise me at all. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The, the, yes. The, the difference the difference between us and I think Brazil is that even if like there were people who had the kind of uh, capability to actually create a new forum and then like do something like that, what would actually kind of happen is um, these people would still be part of the main forum. But I, I get this feeling that, that we might be a little bit too lazy to actually be able to go through the rigmarole that, that ZFR has gone through, which actually makes it like really, really good because I mean the, the ZFR forum is, is you know to an extent one of a kind and it actually does exactly what it needs to the do. The rigmarole that goes through is the fact that you cannot host any freaking thing locally in South Africa anymore. <laughs> so I think that our forum, isn't it hosted like in Switzerland? Yeah. I think it's 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 somewhere <laughs> over, yeah. it's a, and it's it's on servers there, not here, because our internet is just too terrible to host anything. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. We, we 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 don't have the best of the internet connections ever, but yeah, we manage. <laughs> we manage. Now, now uh, another thing that I actually want to get at is, um, I know we spoke about this just a little bit now, just before we went on is uh, last podcast, uh, myself and Scratch spoke about the weather here in Cape Town because we we were literally dying of heat. That It was like a heat wave that went over this place. And one thing that I actually want to ask you, Brazil, right? And we discussed yeah. fursuiting. I want to know if you've seen any fursuiters in the summer in Brazil. It's really hard to see. It's really hard to see a fursuiter in the summer because, uh, well, obviously the, the sun punishes uh, <laughs> the fursuiters a little harder than it does the anywhere else others. in the world, so, except, <laughs> except maybe uh, <laughs> the, the, the yes, Emirates. <laughs> um, but but they're but they're coming up with very. Inter interesting solutions for that. There's yeah. a guy uh, here that, that he, he managed to install coolers inside the fursuit so he doesn't like dice. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, like I, PC I, coolers or what? <laughs> no, no, probably like a water cooling. Yeah, small stuff. coolers, small coolers, actually small coolers, yes, like water coolers. Uh, no, I actually, actually small fans. I, I have a question for you guys. Um, <clears throat> Now there's, uh, I think uh, I've, I'm looking at at the at this uh, link that uh, Puen posted about from uh, 
damn it, from adjective species. Uh, the site Fauna Urbana. Or f Fauna Ar Arubana. Yeah, the, yeah it's, it, uh, don't worry. <laughs> I do. Um, there's a picture of, I think, Kimba the lion here huh? going to Brazil. Like, I'm looking at the from the Otaku stuff that you guys actually have. Let me see. Uh, you go to the I, it's now. been a while since I have looked this site. So let me check it. Apparently, that's your uh, most active site that you have. I need to like have a translator out here. I can't read. I use, it. I, yeah, I I had a I used I used to have a um a weekly uh a weekly how do I say it? It's not a a column. No, it's not a column. I used to have a a, a weekly post thing in this site, which was called weekly weekly paw. Translating to the English, it means weekly pop, and it was a, a humorous uh, news thing that we had with a few friends, and I, I think it's uh, we we reached a point where we couldn't maintain this this column in this site, so we handed it over to other furries, but they are not keeping the thing alive. It's dying. <laughs> it's sad. <laughs> Mm. <clears throat> we have some people complaining about that with our, our website and considering all the WhatsApp groups and everything like that. Some people sometimes say, oh, no, they're not keeping the site alive. But uh, at the end of the day, you cannot force people to do things. Um, I'm looking at your Furry Brazil site. I actually like it. It's a little bit different from our ours. <laughs> the, the way Just pop a link. The way it's laid out, furryresolve.com. It it doesn't look like a furry site at all on first glance, and then then you see that it actually is. Let me pop it here on the chat. Where is the chat? Here it is. Okay, for those oh, of you this... looking for this as well, don't look at the furry Brazilian. <laughs> because... Oh no! <laughs> be, be very. <laughs> 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 okay. <What>? Yeah. <laughs> this one apparently talks about breast implants and augmentation. Yeah, you, uh, you went to the no, wrong no, site. Uh, I, don't went, think, I don't the... think you are. <laughs> I don't think you are looking at the correct site, man. No. Oh, that's actually me in the picture. Oh, really? I, I, I'm looking at Furry Brazil here, and they have a picture of me there. <laughs> oh, hey, oh. me. <laughs> oh. Small world, I suppose. A small country. Yes. Do you mind if we yes. your Facebook oh. page? Uh, what? Do you think it's okay if we like your Facebook page? I know I will. Oh yeah, please, please do. Oh, I I always keep forgetting to update that. Oh, I should post my songs there. I, I keep forgetting. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, plug away. This is what we're here for. Hmm. No Just as a point of interest, how old are you? Um, I'm 27. Huh. Okay. Damn it! Uh, are the other person? Yeah, yeah, you're still the oldest. Get over it. Um, <laughs> Me? Uh, oh, I'm the oldest? No, no, no. no, no. Uh, I'm the second youngest. Uh, I'm yeah. Oh, okay. Um, is everyone else roughly the same sort of age? Because we've had like a big influx of new sort of, of young blood furs uh, in the in our community specifically. I don't know about you guys. Hashtag young fur. Yeah, get over it. <laughs> I have a uh, yeah. I, we we here in Brazil we have the same. Uh, I wouldn't say problem, but I would say that same phenomena. The same feature maybe. Yeah, the same phenomena, and it, it's really interesting because the newest furries they 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 got in when the thing was how can I say when it was all sorted out. I mean we have a structure now nowadays. That we didn't have in 2011, and mm -hmm. it's it's really easy for for new furries to get inside the 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 party and to exchange messages. And we have a lot of different channels. We have a, a WhatsApp group. We have a uh, what else? We have a Telegram group. We have Facebook pages. We have so many different channels, and all of them. Um, like communicate with 
interact with each other, and this is really cool. I mean, you... Oh, and another thing that happened recently is that the media started talking about furries. Yeah, that, that seems to be a thing. I mean, I think it's probably because of the whole um, uh, MFF chlorine bombing thing that it got a little bit of, of news, and now they're sort of discovering, hey, wait, this isn't just an American thing or a U.S. Mm. thing. Or, well, I, I guess in I, South I, Africa, they tend to leave it alone because they don't know about us. Yeah, Calvinist as hell. Yeah. Or, hey, wait, actually, the, these people's lives are in danger in a situation like that, maybe. Or, not lives, but... Yes, their lives, <laughs> but it's it's but always I, portrayed in a negative way when it comes to the media, and that's one thing that I always have a problem with. Is like Doctor Full. Well, he didn't actually make it that negative, but he did cho choose the examples of the worst case scenarios. Yeah, Somebody that's he, unemployed you, you that that needs to get a job and something like that. No, I'm I'm a furry as well, and then a guy that eats dog food. But um, we we have that media works that way. It always focuses on the negative so that it's actually entertaining. Yeah. Otherwise, it would be boring. You mean in, in South Africa? Well, uh, across the globe, actually. Uh, the, the, wow, really? I mean, so you're saying that our media is actually forgiving about uh, the way they portray furries? No, 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 not forgiving. I'm saying it's supposed to be. I'm saying it's not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, okay. I get it. Because um, uh, forgiving doesn't sell. It sell. <laughs> Hating does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's sadly right. Sadly right. Yeah, like Hargan actually just said, uh, Hargan on the, um, thank you for joining us, by the way. And also thank you for letting people know on the other side that we're on this side. But yeah, uh, sensationalism sells. Mm, of course. Sensationalism, yes. Yeah. But uh, but that's also the other thing. Like, you watch this, you watch the news show of the incident that happened there at MFF, right? And the lady, I, I don't know which channel it was on. I don't know if it was CNN or what the hell. Ever. The lady but, giving oh. the article, she just couldn't talk any further and ran out of the room. But she did the right thing. She didn't just sit there and fucking laugh about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like the other two people did, they were actually, they were being very, very rude. She was going, I cannot be a newscaster at this point. Just let me go and have a chuckle somewhere else and I'll come back. Yeah. Ah, it's still, I don't understand why it's such a comical thing. Well, maybe it's something new for some people. And maybe... Yeah, uh, people who don't even know. Yeah, well. But uh, it shouldn't be. I... I, I would expect the worst. I, I, I thought everybody freaking uh, watch CSI by now. They should actually go, ah, oh, no. <laughs> that, that, that's like one episode out of yeah, the watch. CSI. Yeah, I remember that. CSI featured furries once. Yes, but in Didn't a they? very bad light. <laughs> oh, uh, that was, oh yeah. I remember uh, that. I'm, I'm <laughs> looking at a, uh, at a, like the, the other article that, um, Raccoon put through uh, the the interview with Ze uh, Zeta Haru. Uh, <gasps> oh, yeah. that guy! <laughs> yes, that guy. Um, apparently, now this is in respect to iPhone sales, and apparently iPhones are pretty expensive down your side. Um, apparently, there was a, <laughs> a thing where they would buy their the Americans would buy their iPhones in America for about four hundred to five hundred dollars. And then they sold them for around about one thousand two hundred to one thousand four hundred dollars in your country. Yes, which is apparently still cheaper than that you happens. can get in stores. No, that's that's really expensive. Like dollars, that's like ten thousand rand. Yeah, yeah, but is it U.S. dollars? It's probably U.S. dollars. What currency? Yeah, what? yeah it is. It is. Um, if you're talking about the Brazilian uh, economy, yes, it's the. What happens is mostly this. Um, people tend to, uh, at the same time that you, you at, I'm giving you an example here. At the same time that, say, you're buying an iPhone for like $700, we are buying the same thing for like uh, three times the price. Ugh. Because, the, 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 because we have unforgiving taxes here. 
because our government doesn't know how to handle his shit. <laughs> Welcome to welcome to South Africa as well. I think we spoke about this at one point. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, but I don't think it's it's that bad. Okay, but, <laughs> but are yeah. you talking about our country? Yeah, it is. Textile, textile <laughs> import tax is fifty percent of what's on the on the pack. It's stupidly expensive. Yes, when anything. it's uh, when it's over three thousand rand, three thousand five hundred no. rand is a cut off limit. No, genuinely, at customs you have to bring in something that is over that value. And if you bring in something and it's like a gift, you could just say it's a gift. They they say okay, well it's fine unless you bring like two of it or three of it. So no, it's three thousand five hundred rand. That's the cut off limit. Still BS doesn't change the fact. Yeah, I know because I brought uh, the I bu I bought the Xbox One, not Xbox One, the new Xbox One, the actual original Xbox One. Uh, I bought in Amsterdam in two thousand and four, and I had that problem coming over the border because uh, I had to actually tell the guy, listen, it's a gift. Otherwise, I'm going to have to pay another freaking uh, uh, thousand seven hundred rand for this thing. No. And at customs to get back into my own country. <laughs> oh <Yeah>. my god! <laughs> well, um, if I'm looking at prices here, the uh, iPhone 5s, 16 gigabyte, costs 8,000 rand in stores. Yeah, yeah it is. That back, that's about 700 US dollars. Uh, jeez. That's about 700 US dollars. Uh, around about, just just about 700 US dollars. It's not cheap. Anything huh. we anything we try to get down here is ridiculously expensive. Yeah, and also it, uh, phones, uh, the iPhones and Galaxy phones, those smartphones are that expensive, actually. By the way. <laughs> yeah, but there is a lot of a lot of markup that goes to customs. Yeah, and that goes through, and uh, there's a lot of markup that goes through shipping and transport and all these things. Mm. Another thing, another thing that I wanted to ask you is, okay, uh, everybody always tells us from, from uh, this is actually a funny topic, you might find this interesting, Fox T. When we speak to like anybody, right, from overseas, they're like, no, not anybody, but you get the sense that people think like the Kruger National Park is right next door to my house and that, that I can like <laughs> ride on an elephant on my way to work, right? <laughs> no, no, no! I, I really, actually, I actually started this thing, and some people even freaking believed me, right? And oh my god! I, I started it on on a furry forum, saying that this is my transport, <laughs> and uh, eventually, obviously, some people kind of fished me out and said, "No, it's not like that. Not if you live in Cape Town, you idiot." <laughs> But, not uh, if you live in Cape Town, <laughs> but everywhere else, it's still okay. yeah. It's everywhere still else, happens. everywhere else, this happens. <laughs> South Africa. I want to ask if you guys get the same thing because when I envision Brazil, right, I always see the Amazon. And uh, the same, if people envision Africa, they see lions and elephants and rhinoceros and. All the animals, right? But when I see Brazil, I yeah. see the Amazon and I see the anacondas and I see the Amazon River and this dense forest and flowers that can kill you if you smell it. <laughs> Stuff like that. So do you guys get well, the same thing like from the outside? That same sort of misconception well, about your country. Yes. Yes, we have from that. <laughs> That that's the starting point <laughs> of people's craziness about our country. It's so funny. People think we have carnival for the whole year. We are always partying. We are always drinking. And all about us is like sex and women and partying and <laughs> what else? Uh, what else? Let me see. Uh, and, and the and soccer, yes, a lot of soccer. A lot of yeah. soccer in the middle. And, and favelas Samba and everywhere. favelas everywhere. <laughs> the Simpsons actually, the Simpsons did a good job in feeding the the biases we have from the outsiders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
the, the, the episode from the, the actually Matt Groening had to apologize because it offended most Brazilians. Wow. <laughs> Matt, Gro <laughs> Matt Groening actually apologized for the. Yeah, that's episode, good. At least but... I did apologize. That's, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Well, I suppose if an entire country coaxes an, uh, an apology out of out of someone uh, who wants to make a living out of cartooning, then yeah. Is that, yeah, you, but you better sit up and listen. I, I think I think Brazilian people tend to take these things really seriously. I, I think it's wrong. I mean, why would you take humor seriously? <laughs> I, I mean, you're, it's not a news channel. It's not a a, a credit credibility. Is there a word for that? Uh, something that has credibility? Yes. Um, uh, like a. I don't know. <laughs> now, what, okay, but <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is that if it were a news channel speaking things like that, then yes, I would take it seriously. But not. But no, it's a cartoon. It's a humor thing. Yes. Why would you take humor seriously? It's a Brazilians here are are on a wave of taking everything our comedians, our stand-up comedians, say seriously. It's it's so annoying. The Brazilian uh, Brazilian comedy Brazilian comedians they can they can't do their work because if they do. They are taken seriously, and they are taken like a a formal opinion about the Brazilian stuff. It's yeah. annoying. Yeah, yeah, that is that is a little bit different from here. Here we actually we kind of engage uh, the, 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 with the comedians to actually have a comedy about. South Africa and the way stuff goes. People like that type of comedy, especially if it's really slapstick or how can you call it very, very stereotypical South Africa. People like that comedy here for some reason because I think that that just the fact that they're getting attention is, is good. Oh, <laughs> I see, I see. There's a lot of satire in South African humor. Yeah. Right but like, it's it, it's but that's that's been going on since the 1980s. I mean, like even with uh, during uh, a lot of those people actually used to be um, they were uh, they were banned from South Africa. A lot of those comedians, the people who were very much against uh, were against the government at the time. Um, <clears throat> I mean, some of our most prolific poets, writers, musicians, etc. They were all um, I, either the music was banned from. Um, from like uh, being played anywhere or read or anything, or um, like so. I mean, like the thing is that we've come a long way since uh, since 1994. Uh, if you and, think about it, yeah. and before, I mean, Breiten, 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 Bach. Breiten, um, Breiten, 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 Bach. Yeah, I mean, he was he was in prison for marrying outside of his race and fled to France at some point as well, isn't it? But yeah, it, it, it was a weird time for our country. Yeah. But, and, and yeah, and a lot of that was sort of anti-establishment, anti-government speech. And I think our comedians sort of are still in that same vein. There's a lot of there's a lot you can say about our government, and a lot of stupid, stupid comments you can make about it. But yeah, yeah, it it, it still keeps that very, very grounded satirical voice that it used to have. Mm. I mean, if you if you look at what Hargan actually said, I mean, in South Africa, the politicians are stealing our comedians' jobs. Uh, yeah. One of our uh, less well, one of our more infamous uh, singers, a uh, person called Steve Hofmeyer, recently had a Twitter fight with a puppet. Yeah, and lost. And lost. <laughs> actually, he went on. He went into legal. He went into. He he wanted to sue him for um, for pretty much uh, like his name. Uh, Norm skin like, what's it? Defamation of character. Yeah, defamation, defamation of character. And he lost. That was hilarious. <laughs> I didn't even so, know yeah. about this. Oh. It was, um, uh, yeah, Steve Wolf. I got in a fight with a with a ventriloquist. Yes. Who has like this this sort of puppet, puppet who set also talk has, like, satirical, uh, also has like sat uh, satirical um, comedy show or something like that. And Steve Wolf just took massive offense to it That's... because he's a flaming racist. Yeah, he is, but that is actually really funny. Um, I I can already see the comedy artwork of it. Yeah, Anyways, a... uh, Fox D, can I post your Fur Affinity account to the group that, that they can check it out and maybe listen to some of your tracks? Oh, by all means. Um, I and please uh, give me feedback. If you're a musician, give me feedback. I'm trying to learn how to do my stuff since 2008. 
and I can't really receive, and I don't re and, and I don't get much feedback about my tracks. What? what, what uh, I haven't listened yet because unfortunately we're talking. Um, uh, or oh, we were. I was busy setting up the podcast when when you showed me the link the first time. Um, what oh, type no of music do you do you make? Uh, if you're using FL Studio, I'm presuming probably electronic music. Yes, yes, electronic music. But um, since I, I I tend to uh, I I have learned music to to be able to produce uh, the soundtracks for my games. I my style tends to mix uh, the style of music from the 80s and 90s plus Ooh. the video game music. You know, there, there is. And, a, but I'm moving from that. Uh, excuse me. There is a certain thing in the '90s style of electronic music that I really, really enjoy, and that is when the underground went back into the underground. It's called the prodigy. Bands like those that use those old vinyl uh, drums that still sounds that way when they do uh, the, the, when they do their compression methods today. Still, it still sounds like excuse that. Me, did you say? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it still sounds like they use those old old vinyl drums that was like distorted and messed up. And you find it in bands like The Prodigy, Crystal Method. Uh, 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 Good name. I love those. <laughs> Crystal Method. I love those guys. And uh, what else? Who else does Big Beat? That's the genre's name. It's some punk or Big Beat. But it's all those things. That's what I love from the 90s. It's when the underground went back back to the underground. And now they're still making today albums that everybody looks like, Oh, this is so controversial. This doesn't work. Because everybody now is listening to dubstep. And then the prodigy comes out of Invaders Must Die. And everybody is like, Whoa, this is different. This, this doesn't sound like today's music. <laughs> yes. Um, I actually love the Prodigy and Crystal Method from a very, very, very young age. Yeah, I you... mean, from almost from the time that I got inside the fandom, I loved those two specific bands. You played and Need, Need for when Speed. I was twin... Yes. That's where Crystal and Method when I was... <laughs> Yeah. Someone met Crystal Method because of that game. But anyways, when I was 22, um, I went into the, the Prodigies show that happened in Curitiba when I was living there. Oh, yes. And man, was that as wow, it was an incredible experience. Oh my god, I don't remember flipping out so hard in a, in a musician's <laughs> show. Oh my god, it really is good. I actually saw the synergy one year with the Prodigy, with the Prodigy as well, but they were the only good band, actually. <laughs> it was a good group, the rest was some local talent. <laughs> Yes, and I, I, I had uh, very, very nice things happen to me in that show. I mean, uh, the, the, the guitarist, he looked to me and he asked me, do you want my water? I was like, yeah, sure. And he threw me his water. I was like, oh, that's so nice. And then uh, and another thing uh, that happened in the show is that the vocalists, they, they, they came uh, to me, they came right in front of me, and they were like uh, singing with me. And then, wow, it was a very powerful moment. I was like, oh my god, these guys are actually in front of me, looking at me, singing with me. Oh my god. <laughs> That's awesome. God. Wow, it was really, really awesome. Yeah. But um, and your genre, the one, your favorite one. I I know you obviously like big beats. So, uh, uh, what what do you try to? Uh, what what is your production involved? Is it house music, electro electro house, trance, techno, big beat, maybe? Or do you just no, do I, the, I, do like whatever you feel like doing? Because that's actually sort of what yeah, I do. I, <laughs> yes, I I most of the time I do what I feel like doing. But I'm still, I'm still trying to find my own style because I don't have a specific style. I don't find I didn't find my musical identity yet, and I'm trying to pursue that with uh, with the with remixes like the the latest remix I published, with, uh, which was somebody that I used to know. Um, that's oh, from that's OTA. actually an attempt. Yes, I. That's what I am pursuing right now. I'm trying to find my own uh, electronic style, and because, um, for example, I I want that. For example, uh, Prodigy, 
When you listen to any Prodigy music, on the first two seconds you say, wow, that's a music from Prodigy. And the mm. same goes for Crystal Methods and other... From Scatman John, man, I love Scatman John. Oh, I yeah. think he died early. And Would you say those are your influences? Uh, yes, kind of. Um, I tried to uh, group everything I used to like to hear in the 90s, 80s and 90s. Like, stuff like Corona, like um, Culture Beat, like Hathaway. I tried to, to mix all that into my own style, but it's, it's really hard. And there's other bands as well. There's Sash, there's um, Technotronic. I really love those. And what else? Mostly the Eurodance famous bands from back then. Eurodance. Hmm. Are there any uh, Brazilian artists that uh, that are in, that, that that influence you at all? Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, for example, Corona is actually a Brazilian singer and a Brazilian band, and it made a lot of success in the '90s and '80s with "This Is the Rhythm of the Night." Do you know that song? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It's, huh. I didn't know that the musicians involved were Brazilian, and I was like, wow. Huh. And I, I like that. I try to assimilate that into my style as well. The only good thing, or not good thing, well, it depends on how, um, how, how people's stasis, but the only international thing. As for music artists that came out of South Africa recently is the Antwoord. Oh, don't even talk about that. Did my guild <laughs> all up in the Antwoord. Do they like them? Yes. Oh Lord. Everybody, everybody internationally is like, "Wow, this is so good," but it's because they don't know what the guys are, what the what the lyrics is, and it's yeah. like the most shallow music that you can ever listen to in your entire life. <laughs> uh, another question, uh, Fox T. Um, okay. I know that uh, it's it's been a yearly thing recently uh, since I think possibly the nineteen eighties. I know that Queen played there once or twice. Uh, but Rock in Rio, have you ever been there? <clears throat> oh, I so want to go there once. I, I have never been there, but the the latest ones was so, so awesome. My girlfriend went there and she said that, well, from the bands that played there, I, I felt really bad for not being able to go again. Mm. And but I heard it's really, really, really awesome. Very I remember powerful. there was there was a year that system of downplayed in uh, at at Rock and Roll, and apparently they were talking about the fact that you know for a country that that doesn't necessarily know a lot of English, they knew a lot of the words to the songs. Um, yes. That they were playing. It's really and, common, actually. And in 2004, I know uh, Iron Maiden played there to a crowd of 250,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. Yeah, two hundred and fifty thousand people. Rock and Rio, two thousand. Have you ever? Uh, I think have you ever been to like a large concert, like thirty thousand, forty thousand people? Like the biggest concert that I ever went to was, um, uh, damn it, <clears throat> was the Rammstein concert. And I'm going to go to the open air concert in April, uh, which is going to involve like a whole bunch of really, really big. Black and death metal bands, which I'm, I'm just, not necessarily uh, I'm, I'm just asking you because I want to know if you know the perspective of 250,000 people. I've seen, look, uh, uh, Iron Maiden actually released a DVD of, of that specific cover, which actually like crosses over two CDs. Um, uh, they, yeah, they've got a lot of gr uh, crowd shots. That was, it's, it's a really, really large amount of people. Actually, when it's that big, I don't even know if it'll be fun at all. Uh, well, I mean, uh, to, well, if if you look at uh, the the things that Iron Maiden actually said, and the thing is, is that you're looking at like 250,000 people in Brazil, all like doing, and the thing is, is that they were playing Fear of the Dark, and it just now, yeah. if if you want if you want magnitude, you need to listen to that Fear of the Dark song, because you have the entire crowd singing along with the guitar um, intervals. Hmm. Nice. And only. Yes. Twenty percent of them have beers because <laughs> the rest is still waiting for their beers and yeah. for the bathroom. <laughs> I, I reckon they just eat on each other. <laughs> At that point, yeah. Like, everybody's wet. It's hot. There's a whole bunch of people crowded, and I'm gonna pee on you. 
You won't notice. Okay, fuck it, dude. I'm never taking you any fuck away to any I'm concert not gonna stand or right next any, to any hey. fucking thing. <laughs> and by the way, that was not for the sway jaw. Did I cut out? Am I here? Yes, you're there. You're here. Um, something happened. I can't hear you guys. You couldn't hear us. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't hear you either. I couldn't hear you. Yeah. You were. Yeah. You swore an eye. Okay, it's back. It's back. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's weird. Small, small two to three second blip, so it's all right. That that's my internet then. Yep. Yeah. But but yeah. So I mean, like music is big down there, as as far as I remember. I mean, like having a concert that has up to about two hundred and fifty thousand people must be. Huge. I mean, it's it's bigger than any of the concerts that we've ever had here in South Africa. Uh, yeah, it's pretty intense. I wish I could go there. Here. Yeah. Oh no no no! Concerts. Yeah. Two hundred fifty thousand people. That's a quarter of a million people. Yes. yes. <laughs> no, you're looking it up. I see. Did you, did you look at just, uh, just so that's a my quarter of a million people? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, I'm joking. No, I'm joking. Yeah, my math is that horrible. I somehow still got in here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't so wrap my head Who uh, want to know about the, uh, there's an open air concert coming here in South Africa. Uh, just uh, to move on to a couple of South African things. <clears throat> uh, which fest... Uh, 2015 has been moving around like you would not believe because of our uh, wonderful Christian background uh, because Cannibal Corpse is playing <laughs> oh god okay Yo. yeah Cannibal Corpse yeah what <laughs> where you get the ooms and tannies and half and it really fucking wound up yeah that's about right wait where's it gonna play uh, where's uh, the festival just nearby Lanseria, apparently. I, I'm trying to find the tour uh, now. Uh, Iluvite is coming here. At the Gates is coming. Uh, Ministry is coming. Not Ministry of Sound. No. Yeah. Just let me see if I can find this damn event. Uh, yeah. Witchfest open air at the Klein Corporal Farm. <laughs> It's a weekend thing. I need to go to this. <laughs> Holy crap. It's from the 2nd to the 4th. Um, well, the Febor. Here, I'm just going to pop this link here. Uh, uh, upcoming events. For those of you who want to know about a little bit of metal in your lives, you're in South Africa. Oh, good, thanks. I know you're good. You don't listen to metal. You just... <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit all over the show. Where's yeah, the uh, link? I just popped it. Oh, in the chat already. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, tickets... <laughs> cost 480 I think that's for... One, yeah. For which fest? The full festival will cost you 1350 And parking okay. for one car. I suppose it's not that much. I mean, yeah, this is actually yeah. over the. Um... Oh man, I wouldn't be able to go. Anywho, yeah. <laughs> so back to back to Brazil. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm noticing Ivik is not. Uh, he's now excited about this festival. <laughs> I'm very excited about this festival. Um, one thing that I actually want to ask you: Will you ever want to come visit South Africa? Uh, nah. <laughs> um, good answer. Uh, I'm not. I wouldn't say no, but I wouldn't say yes either because it's like a. Um, I don't want to offend you guys, but let's say it's like it doesn't shine, but at mm -hmm. least, but at the same time, it doesn't. Uh, how do I say it? It's not in. I, I mean, you don't hear about that much. You see, you don't yes. hear about uh, South Africa much, and you don't hear about the good things that you have in South Africa much. <laughs> you know, you know, maybe you, that's why. You, uh, 
you don't have to be afraid. You can say what you want to say. It's it's because what when you say it doesn't shine, I say yeah, but it's not dark either. <laughs> so it, it's 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 it doesn't shine. Yeah, and yeah, it's not that's evil I... enough. It's so bleh. And that's why nobody wants to come to South Africa. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's yeah, a gray area between uh, it's not a dark place and it's not a, a shining place, you see. When, when I say shining, I say that, well, when something is shiny, you, you, you can't not look at it. Yeah. It's shining. I, I, you, you, you look at it. <laughs> it it's yeah. shining. You, you, you look I, at it. I, I guess what you're saying is it's, it's not a, like, sort of a worthwhile holiday. Like, um, like, yeah, yeah maybe. I would go to yeah. Brazil. I would, but I am like that. I would go to like freaking any place. Uh, uh, but I would go to Brazil. Therefore, oh, ev everything it, that it portrays, that you said it portrays, for the parties and the women and. <laughs> 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 well, um, they, we are actually, uh, actually, the, the guys that live in the region where I live, we say that Brazil <laughs> is is worth for like five to six capitals. Like um, they say, Brazil is worth a while if only you visit the the capitals, like Belo Horizonte, like Curitiba, like São Paulo, like Santa Catarina, mm. like. Yeah, the, those guys, you see, the capitals, and uh -huh. yeah, and I, I have come to agree with that, because when you go to the other smaller cities, there's absolutely nothing to do, and some of them doesn't even have internet. I don't want to live in a place that doesn't have internet. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That, that, that would be a real downer for us all, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, for his internet denizens, we can't live without it. And that's how we became to... Wow, that's very expensive. And now we have this power cut. <coughs> but uh, it hasn't happened this year yet for me. It has once. For us, it did like one Friday, I think. Well, if it was during the day, I don't know. Uh, but mine, mine normally starts at 8 o'clock, so I missed it. But yeah. Do you guys live in the same region or something? Uh, 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 myself and Scratch, we both live in Cape Town. Yeah. They're, they're as close to Brazil as you can get. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's oh. pretty much the Rio de Janeiro of, uh, of, of, of South Africa. The, yeah. Fine. I see. It's, got a, it's, it's, it's got a beach, even though like 80% of the people in, so in, in, in Cape Town actually don't live anywhere near it. Yes, because nobody cares because the water is not water at all. Oh, it's, it's ice. No, it's like, no, it's ice like liquid nitrogen that because it can't melt <laughs> so, oh. or it can if it's even can I, uh, can, hmm? I, uh, can I space out can, can I can I say something here I see that I have a new watcher from the stream thanks sure. for the watch man thanks for the watch <laughs> yeah. Doringo Free Fox thanks for the watch I, uh, he's a great artist you can check out yeah. his stuff as well eh Rigo also does a little bit of uh, interesting music. Uh, if Phoenix was on here, he also does some music. What we can always do is, is that if you ever want to get in touch with these people, they're actually very, very cool. Speak to uh, Anpu if you want mixing done. Ha, <laughs> ha, um, Yeah. I'm laughing because you probably wouldn't be able to do it. You're too no, busy. I can. Uh, just... <laughs> <You're> busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, if if you want me to do it, then then we can chat. But yeah, like I said, it's oh, it's, it's a story. I'd feel glad. I'd, I'd feel glad. I'd feel glad if you teach me how to do that. <laughs> so the plug and pack, lots of compressors. Well, basically, actually, that whole process is you take your beautiful masterpiece artwork and you fuck it up. That's what mixing <laughs> and mastering is. No, really, Just that. You, f you, you make flatten it, the shit out of it. You flatten the shit out of it. You compress it into fucking oblivion. Well, you don't compress it into oblivion just by putting one compressor on it and making it like a bad ratio. But basically, inevitably, what you're going to do is you're going to turn your track with all the dynamics of music in it and you're going to turn it into one fat sausage that just fills the whole freaking range and nothing is different volumes from anything else and that's just how your music is gonna look 
for those of us joining us right now, we're <laughs> speaking to Fox T from Brazil. Way to take the fun Hello. out of it. Did, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, just making sure. Um, yeah, we're speaking to Fox T from Brazil. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us who... Um, I don't necessarily know your name or you're not familiar to us. Enigmatic Wolf. Um, Titan Reaper, uh, you actually joined yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you for dropping in, Elsa. I know that I'm doing, like, uh, shout-outs now. But, yeah, for those of you who are just joining us, welcome to the South Africa podcast. We're an hour in. We've got another half an hour to go. Thank you for listening. Thank you for commenting. Uh, like our Twitter and uh, Facebook pages if you really want to hear more and get updated properly because uh, apparently that doesn't happen often enough. Um, yeah. Do you have another half an hour? Yeah, I remember you said that we're doing um, uh, an hour and a half from now on. No, I didn't say that. I said we can do an hour and a half, but we can do an hour and a half. It's fine. Oh, uh, I've just dropped my Twitter in the in the... In the chat, so you can just pop it to the rest of the audience. For sure. Okay, yeah. let me check here. Wait, let me just I'll... make sure. Okay, that's... While you're at it, pop our Facebook and our Twitter in there as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, good call. Let me just do that. Yeah, yours as well. Uh, uh, if you, uh, just, a, just a disclaimer. If you, if you take a look at my Facebook page, I mostly post in Portuguese. So you, you may want to communicate with me by Twitter. <laughs> because on Twitter, <laughs> I... I I make an effort to tweet in English, so <laughs> so yeah. Maybe if you take a look at my timeline, uh, at my main timeline in Facebook, I would post in Portuguese. But I ha also have a, a a Facebook page, which I mo which I will commit to post in English. So <laughs> yeah, ma make sure to like that page so you can know the things that I do Did you when I do. <laughs> Facebook page. Let me just copy that. Ah, come on. And the Facebook page is this. For Affinity Fox T. Cool. So, yes. A um, little bit of a... Uh, Wait, what's like, the difference between the two Facebook pages? The the Fox Tessie, he, uh, he, he, he does in Portuguese. <coughs> And oh. then the affinity one he does, he'll he'll uh, post in English. Ah, okay, okay, okay. That Those of sense. you who have translators, just you know, Google Translate the crap out of it and get rid of like. I'd like, just like, rather actually <laughs> take the fur affinity one because it's just gonna be easier and practically only related to international stuff. I think it's easier, but um, yeah, yeah, by all means. But mm. uh, yeah, it's, it's it's because translators are. Okay, I don't know how it is with Portuguese, but when, when you type anything in Afrikaans, perfect grammar, perfect everything, and you try to use Google Translator, forget about it. It, <laughs> it just doesn't work. There's an interesting story that Scratch has actually never told any of us. Scratch worked uh, with Google when there were uh, voice activation for, uh, for, for accents and things like that to translate not, things not into Afrikaans. Not worked with. It was literally just sort of. It, it was sitting down, reading a ton of like Google search um, uh, terms in Afrikaans, and so they just have a, like a voice data bank to mine. That's all they wanted. Um, what what words I, did you use? I want to hear your voice data bank thing. No, they. No, they don't like. I don't think they actually like have someone read it out, like read it back to them or some. I I don't know where they used it for, but. Yeah, I got a few. Oh, uh, that up. would be and, so cool but, if yeah, you could I, type I, in I and remember, we could. <laughs> hmm. you know, I can't remember any of the of the actual like words that I really um, like had to read out, except for a bunch of place names and whatever. But there was a uh, it was an app that was written for Android, so they just recorded it on the phone. And there was a dedicated button for if the search term was porn. Uh, then you just like click it, and it moves on to the next one. <laughs> so. They obviously don't want anyone reading out like Afrikaans porn cycles. I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, <laughs> what they do in uh, <laughs> on OK Cupid, there was actually a thing that you worked with them, where you took Afrikaans terms and then you, uh, or you, you, yeah, you took English terms and wrote them again in Afrikaans, so that they could 
actually start turning that yeah. side into an Afrikaan side as well. I have no idea why they would want to do that. Because so many, so Burkis can speak Afrikaans very deliciously. Yeah? yeah, but there's so few like Afrikaans people on there anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, and there are a lot. I've I've noticed. Yeah, but yeah, how many of them are going to be so bloody obstinate about speaking Afrikaans? Mm. Or wouldn't they go to somewhere else for their fix? <clears throat> <laughs> you mean like the Afrikaans sex hotline? I don't know where. <laughs> I honestly don't. I could like to be wearing a rocky with a belt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm having it. Oh my god, the mental picture of that is just... No, no, no. It's not correct. <laughs> yeah. Speaking, well, not not speaking about that just yet. Well, we might get into that a bit later. But um, I hear that it's very very expensive to like build your own fursuits in um, in Brazil. Because I mean, apparently faux faux fur is like eighty dollars per per square meter. You have to you have to understand. Labor is always going to be more expensive in Brazil because it's fucking not hot about, there. It's not about <laughs> that. It, it's more about like the the faux fur that they get in. I'm joking. It's the material costs. The material like, costs. Oh yeah, the material. Uh, I think that I don't. I can't answer answer that with much uh, precision. But well, for um. <clears throat> The 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 first suitors that I know from here, the, actually the first suit makers that I I know from here, I their first suits um, costs in our currency here from um, one hundred and no fourteen hundreds to two grand or three grand to make a, a complete first suit, hmm. depending okay. on the quality of the material. That's not that, that's dollars. that's basically what US also charges. Well, uh, if that is for uh, if a three grand suit is a really high quality suit, by the way. Yeah, uh, no, but um, you can take that amount and divide by like three or four because our currency is um, is a lot more. Uh, how do I say unvalued than the, than the dollar? So. It's so much. It's undervalued than dollar. Okay. Like you take the dollar and you divide the number I just said by the value of the dollar, and there you have it. You have our currency. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it's the real, isn't it? Or the real? Yeah. Uh, the no. Real. <laughs> what? No. Real. Well, um, to yeah. get to our currency, you have to divide the the it by ten. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> Real. It's strange when you say that. It's strange when you say it like that. That our our currency is real. A real. <laughs> it's a because, real currency. Well, <laughs> things, things doesn't things doesn't get real around here much. But um. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. And, and, and currently, your currency is valued higher than ours. So that's yeah. It's just a feather you can stick in your cap at least. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, thirty-eight U.S. cents to the real. We have like what nine U.S. cents to the to the rand. So yeah, <laughs> you keep that. Yeah, but then also the the pricing of stuff differs. When you're talking about three grand a year, you're talking about thirty thousand rand. <laughs> yeah, that's how it's gonna be. Mm. Forward Ouch. and backwards. Kind of shit, yeah, yeah. So let so let's just say making a first suit here is going to be pretty expensive, as well. Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's expensive. Nowhere is it's going to be cheap. And uh, I mean, it is something that is creative. You'd rather pay a lot of money if you want a good suit, than uh, than pay a little money, a little bit, and get a crappy thing or. A mass-produced yeah. thing because it's not mass-produced. Obviously, it's going to be expensive. You want your mm -hmm. thing, not the thing that everybody wears. I think you can get mascot suits out there of Snoopy for like freaking cheap. <laughs> yeah, true. <sure. laughs> yeah, or maybe not. I don't think those things are ever actually really made to be produced in bulk, if you will. Uh, 
Here's an interesting thing that has just recently happened. Uh, Twisted Dan from the uh, from the WhatsApp group, who's obviously been listening for a while, finally asked, "Who is the artwork?" And I don't think that he should ever have tried to find out about them. Uh, yeah, yeah just, Twisted okay. Dan, uh, you, you know one of those moments where you actually don't need to know. This is that yeah. moment. <laughs> <laughs> this is this right now is that okay. moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Toxy, you might as well stay out of it as well. Like yeah. you don't need. To don't don't listen step. to that band. Just it's 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 horrific. It, actually, you know what? Do yourself a favor. Find their lyrics. No. Translate no. what you can. Don't even do that. Find because out that it's, it's the just, most horrifying thing on earth. It's just a waste of time in any ways. But in any ways. Although although I I will say one thing, um, that. After the new trailer for Chappie, it's starting to look like a good movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, Chappie is one of our um, one of our uh, movies that's coming out from this side. Uh, <clears throat> after what what was the director's name again? Neil Blomkamp, uh, who worked with District Nine. Yeah, District he, Nine, yes. Elysium. Elysium. Yeah. No, he was a director for both those movies. So the producer. No, he was a director. I think Peter Jackson was the producer or something. Yeah. Um, just, uh, just, just revert away from the chat site for the moment, or the the, the chat thing at the moment, because uh, Kane is beginning to troll us a little bit. Mm -hmm. Talk about uh, Blue Waffle, the Human Centipede, uh, and then Bronies. Apparently. <laughs> wow. Apparently, he puts Blue Waffle, Human Centipede, and Bronies in the same category. As the answer. I'm glad someone has some sense. Well, not bronies. All that I can say is don't search that first one. Yeah, uh, please don't. <laughs> you can search the other ones. Even the, even the universe is said to be, you'll find a movie. But don't worry. But don't, don't search the first one. <laughs> not if you want to eat tonight. <laughs> yeah. Not if you want to keep what you've eaten tonight, either. <laughs> Inside. Yeah. Well... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, uh, Foxy, you mentioned uh, you were sort of working on doing some game design yourself. Um, is there anything sort of in, in the pipeline? Can we expect something soon, or is it still a work in progress, as as is mine as well? Um, as a game, uh, you, you asked if I had any undergoing uh, game projects? Yes. Oh, yeah, I have... Many unfinished monsters in the pipeline, <laughs> but I don't. See, but I don't know if I'm ever gonna finish them because it's either not worthwhile, it's or it's either um, it's gonna make uh, it's not fun enough, it's not worth it, or maybe I don't have an artist for that. Mm -hmm. I I still have to think about uh, what to do with my games here this year because. Well, um, in, in respect to that, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there'd be a lot of people who'd be willing to help you, um, maybe even from our side, uh, sort of like maybe turn it into something from, into like a, a game for fruition. If anything, uh, and I know that uh, you mentioned that uh, <clears throat> jobs are, are interesting on your side, uh, I was actually wondering whether we could actually even suggest that you start yourself a Patreon account get that out there on Facebook, on Twitter, anywhere. To get, and that, you, to, get that, to get that done, it's always good to have a, a nice sense. Uh, you need to have an established thing that you're going to do, right? Yeah, almost yeah, like yeah. A, it, it's almost like, a, almost like a business plan, right? Mm. That, you, yeah. that you sell to people to get a Patreon account created and then people will maybe give money. So it works the same as a company starting and you're getting investors, except you're getting investors like from everybody that's going to be your customers. So, yeah. so that's that's practically how that sort of thing works. So it's nice to actually just sit down one day, maybe work with another people. We had some people here on the site that wanted to do game development. Yeah, uh, there's, there's one of us. <laughs> there's a, there's a bunch of us. One thing that is a problem, especially in the furry community, is what I've noticed is everybody wants to do their own thing. <laughs> so it makes it a little bit difficult to actually go to people and say, okay, tell me what game you're going to make. I'll do what you say. You understand? That's one thing that I yes. noticed that is a little bit tricky in the furry community. 
But, uh, because everyone wants to, it's sad, because everyone has a great idea for a great game. Yes. And it's but, so, it's it's kind of frustrating, because when I, uh, when I ask people for help in game development, when I ask uh, people that can't actually work with me in the game, they want to help, and the first thing they do is give me new ideas. Please don't do that. I have a yeah. folder with ideas. <laughs> that, that, yeah. is, that is a shame. I have a folder. <laughs> that is, that is Please, a shame. I don't need that. It will always happen. I mean, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that I don't like people giving me new ideas for games. Not, not at all, but <laughs> the thing is that I need people to work with me with art or with songs or with sound effects, <laughs> which I can cover. And mm -hmm. with with programming, with actual programming, um, people uh, have this bias about game development. They think it's all it's fun to make <laughs> it's games. It's freaking work, <laughs> and it's it's very yeah. difficult it's to work. Not, as a matter of fact, <laughs> it's not. It's it's hard. It's frustrating. It's it's difficult. It takes a lot of time, and sometimes you make something that doesn't sell enough to to compensate for it, and yes. it's mm. depressive. But that works yeah, the I'm same really in it. That is the same with any media related industry. When you when you do it with the the same with music. Making music is frustrating, it's hard, it's annoying, it's difficult. People don't always realize this. And it's hard to get music, right? And then you, you release it and then it doesn't sell as well, or it sells better than you expected, but it's still it's a process. It's the same with any media, whether it's going to be making film or music, games, any sort of consumer media is going to be the same type of work. It's almost the same type of work as well. So it, except obviously on the line of jobs, it's going to be graphics artists. Well, actually, these days you get that in music industry as well. <laughs> and in form. Uh, <laughs> because of the shows and the lights and the freaking stage video that needs a display at the back and whatnot. But it's all media. So, but you can still, uh, the, the, like I said, if you want to start a Patreon account, just sit down on your idea. And then you have to sell that idea via some weird genius method. And then have people do it. That's Especially the way to start it. Well, I mean, if you look Especially at other people, you have a product. Uh, scratch. Carry on. Uh, go ahead, Avik. I just said, yeah. If you have a pr pr prototype, that's that's sort of where um, a lot of people sit up and take notice. Even even if you want to pitch the idea to like a studio or something, if you have a prototype, it means that you're willing to put in the work and you have a, an idea, and you have kind of a direction of where it's going, so they'll listen more. Yeah. Avik, your turn. Um, if People's Patreon accounts, actually. I mean, like Jasona, Jason FX is uh, working with, I think, two other or three other furs uh, to create a dating sim, which is looking very, very good for the moment. Um, he's probably actually gotten further than, uh, I think, something Farm Animal Crossing, which has been in development for like six years. Um, he literally, I mean, like his 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 artwork is amazing, obviously. Um, <clears throat> And uh, like he's he's also got a Patreon account, and I mean like his his lowest bid for for people to actually um, like help kickstart that is fifty dollars. Wow, his lowest bid. His lowest is fifty dollars. I mean that's that's pretty intense. Dude, I, mean, I, like, I struggle to pay that much for a game. I struggle to pay that much for a game as well. I struggle <laughs> to pay that much for food. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What well, what do you build games on? Oh, 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 did you did, did you design your own engine or are you building on something like? Um... I'm guessing. You well, I, I, uh, all the years that I dedicated to game development, uh, that being the, the first day of class on the game development course I, I did with Chiba, to to nowadays I have been dedicating to study uh, engines and methods of developing the game. I have studied Flash. And uh, uh -huh. I have studied Flashbank. I have studied um, Flixel. I really like Flixel and Flashbank. They are really nice engines. And but then I, I realized that I needed something more uh, multi-platform based. And then I stumbled mm -hmm. to, into Unity. I have learned 
I'm a Unity in my in my course, but I haven't but I haven't really dedicated much time to learning how to do it until a time that I got a a, a, a job at game development that I worked in a company for like three months. I wanted to help the guys develop their games, but they didn't listen to me. So that's why I got fired. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yes, and and but I managed to learn a lot about Unity, and I really like the way the, the workflow of Unity. And it's, it is uh, actually multi-platform based, so I really like that. I in my latest projects uh, I have tried to develop in Unity, but um, I still need to learn how to do art, or I need an artist to help me. And my girlfriend said that she would help me. I want to see that happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 3D modeling. Yeah. A lot of a lot of people down here are into that stuff. But no, not, not really. Not really. Not actually um, 3D modeling. Not only really that. I mean, I need to be art as well. But because yeah. I don't. Because 3D games are. Uh, a bit more complicated than 2D games because uh, I, um, I keep forgetting Unity is not just 3D. Yeah, the yeah. engine is also 2D and 3D. Oh. Yeah. I keep forgetting about that. <clears throat> yeah, the 2D the 2D games for me the, the I I would rather actually uh, but, but I'm not an experienced developer in this type of things but when I actually play around with an engine or something like that it's it, like I have the Unreal Engine as well now because you had to pay that and then you can just leave it so there you go it's mine but um, what I what I liked about the way the 3D works it's it's easy sort of to create it and it's easy to get a real basic thing done but then obviously to get your own animations and stuff in it instead of buying from the animation packs or stuff like that that gets more difficult than 2D but one thing in a 2D game that makes it exceptionally difficult for me is I always say the platformer concept, right, to get the pacing right in a 2D game is a phenomenal feat if, if you can do it. To have the game be the, the control feeling right, to have the game have the correct pacing all the way through. Uh, it's for me. It's one of the most difficult things to pull off, and that's why fucking Sega can never pull off another Sonic the Hedgehog platformer. They won't because they can't do it. I even played that Sonic Four. It doesn't work the way Sonic Three and the ones before that were ran. And um, one other platformer of a two D game, but also a platformer game that I actually enjoyed playing was this Rayman thing. Have you guys ever played that? Um, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Rayman. You should try playing it high. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, try playing it high? No. Yeah. Apparently my roommate once tried playing it high with a friend of his. They spent about half an hour punching each other. <laughs> 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 Sounds like a blast. <clears throat> no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's really quick paced and the game just kind of the levels are just the right length the pacing is right you can actually control the character through that scene and audio platformers are the 2d games I can say is an artwork and to generally actually pull it off to be a fun game I think it's actually more difficult than just creating a simple 3d shooter yeah well, actually, you have a specific engine for 3D shooters. Like, uh, a real engine is a really good engine for like uh, to create that shooting yes. games. Yes, but you can also it's build. It's really. Go ahead. You can also, if you if you get the engine, you see that they, they remade Flappy Birds in it as well, and <laughs> all sorts of different things. And it's also platform independent. You can actually <laughs> export that to the mobile phone, and you can play it on your mobile. Yeah, it's cool. So you can do that. It's just, uh, uh, like I said, it's uh, the tools and everything is almost like there. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. But like I said, it's the moment you want your own animation. The moment you want c c c your own collision detection done on certain things or your own decals to, to rip away pieces of wall instead of using the breakaway wall thing that's going to take up so much resources. That is when it gets complicating. That is when it gets a little bit more difficult to, to build because animations just don't look natural if you don't have a guy in a censored suit actually pulling off the stunt. 
that is that is the difference between 3D games and 2D games. Well, 2D games, I still say, there is technicalities there that isn't in the 3D game environment. And that is that pacing and also the artwork of it. Yes. Also, 3D, uh, 3D uh, if 2D artists are, are really hard to find, imagine 3D modelators. 3D modelators. modelators. It's a lot more hard to find. There's so a lot of... The way, <clears throat> There's a lot of people Sorry, that go. do. There's a lot of people that do this, and you can actually get them on the market. But you will normally pay either for a character model, or you would have to and uh, uh, pay for the royalties for that, or you have to actually uh, hire a, a person to build something for you. But you can get them actually through if you if you have the Unity engine. There's gonna be three D modelers. On their forum site, you understand the same with the Unreal Engine. Uh, if you if you if you bought that, you're part of that community, and they actually even have a little marketplace. You can buy all these animations, you can buy all these things, you can buy all these particle effects, you can buy all these characters, and some of it is even for free. But you can actually just put it in your game, and then by putting it in, you also learn how the hell the whole thing works. <laughs> so yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I'm actually trying to, to learn how to how to to draw, not to to draw uh, complex uh, art like Zeta Haru or Furry Bob or other <laughs> yeah, good <but> name <laughs> artists we have there. I have to. I want to do simple 2D art that I can simply animate and make it look good because um, that I'm tired of drawing stickmen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but some people are really skilled at that. That's the thing, and that's something that I actually envy. I really envy artists, by the way. Every artist that is listening in, I envy you guys. I'm flipping green of envy because, damn it, some guys can draw really quickly, really well, and it makes my world collapse. <laughs> but but yeah, I like your no. work. I like your work. It's just, it's, it's so unfair. <laughs> You can learn. Yeah. <laughs> no, they, 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 you get recognized. You get recognized talent as well. It's something that you can learn at a, at a very young age or something like that. But at my age, you you cannot actually make the time to freaking do that, to to learn it. Well, you can, but it's going to be a slow process. You understand? It's like I want to draw like that now. Yeah, well, you're gonna have to put that. You're gonna have to put instant gratification aside for a bit. You understand that? That's how it's gonna work. Yeah, and it do, it doesn't come overnight. Seriously. So you have to practice it and practice it and practice it and practice it and practice it, and that's, that's where you need patience and all these things. So it's a process. With, yeah, as with everything that's worthwhile. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm stuck doing what I actually practiced my whole life. Working, <laughs> doing <laughs> that work. <laughs> so that's pretty much what we all practice, eh? Yes. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. What's that saying? Like, a, um, you're officially a professional when what you used to love doing is a chore. That, yeah, I read that somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Hargan yeah. actually mentioned uh, one of the like, one of my favorite like uh, 2D side scroller platformers. Uh, which was uh, or as well. Yeah, dust. Dust. Oh, yeah. Oh, dust you guys, is so like, beautiful. Yeah, it's very, very oh. beautiful. Uh, I actually mentioned in the chat that you know uh, it, it made me cry, and then he also said it made him cry like a whole bunch of times. Um, <clears throat> the RPGs that uh, some of the RPG plays uh, that they actually make these days are also very, 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 very good. Like to the moon. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did you know that the art by by Dust was made by Jane Ayler? Really? You're shitting me. What? No, no, no. I I really had a I had a hard time believing it, but apparently that yes, it was done by Jane Ayler. If you if, if I'm wrong, please correct me. I can actually believe that his face is that's oh my goodness. Now it all makes sense. Hmm. Wow. Well, Jane Ayler doing art. He, he's not. He's uh, he got rich. <laughs> um, I'm someone else says that that's not true. That's I, not true. I, yeah. The I heard, uh, well, that's own. a rumor. That's a rumor. I I heard that as a as a rumor, and 
I saw that this I lot a lot of discussions about the, the the dust game, and some of the guys there said, "Hey, I think the the art was made by Jay Naylor. Is it correct? I mean, nobody st really stopped to look that if it was true or not. It it was something that, oh my God, it was done by Jay Naylor. Oh my God, it was, and then it got crazy. <laughs> I, if I'm not mistaken, Dust and Lee Sintel was basically made by one guy over the course of four years doing all of the animation and scripting himself. Um, but I will have to double check on that. Yeah, yeah me no, too. I'm, I'm actually checking it right now because um, that was something that, that made a lot of sense because when I look at the first arts that Jane Miller did, it, I thought it was very similar to the to the to the dust art, but I don't. I, I actually am speculating here, but yeah, no, it it doesn't look like it was, uh, but yeah. it does look a lot like his art. Uh, you know, yeah. Apparently, apparently, it's this guy called Dean Dodrell, and he he was a self-taught illustrator and animator who had previously worked on yeah. Jazz Jackrabbit Two. Yeah, no, he's so. the original. <gasps> he's the original developer. Yeah, that's the guy who oh developed and he worked on Jazz Jackrabbit. So I mean, that's either my way, it's pretty game damn cool. All... Oh my <laughs> God, Jack Jack Rabbit two? Yeah. I, really? Yeah. Well, that's Jack my favorite bad. game for all, for all time. Oh my <laughs> God, I love Jack Jack Rabbit. Was... You see, I have a Jack Jack Rabbit in my in my in my Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, oh my you God, know, I'm. Guy who made Dust worked on Jazz Jack Rabbit. Wow, that's so amazing. <laughs> Listen, yeah, guys, but uh, we have like four minutes left. I don't know if you guys want to cut. Uh, want to do the shout outs for now? We can do yeah, shout outs. Okay. It might might be worth doing the shout outs now. And um, yeah, it's getting a little bit late here. <clears throat> yeah. Get ready for work tomorrow. It's already dark in Cape Town. That means it's late. <laughs> yeah. It's been dark here for the past hour. Yeah, well, it gets dark there quickly. That's why everyone got things so grumpy. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, shout outs. Thank you, Raccoon. I am someone else. Lurigo, Kane, Dark, Titan Reaper, Hargan, Honan, and Enigmatic Wolf for listening to the podcast. Uh, two of those guys, uh, I think uh, it was three actually. Enigmatic Wolf, I don't necessarily where you, where, know where you come from, but thank you very much for listening. Again, our next podcast, Wednesday. Uh, also at 8 o'clock. Uh, we may go for an hour, hour and a half. We'll see how uh, the, the chat goes. Yeah, now that we have no restriction, we just sort of wing it. Yeah, we, we wing it to the point that we get tired of talking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, thank you very much for having a listen. Uh, Honan and Titan Reaper, especially to you guys. I see that you guys are new in the... Well, you guys are recently sort of like moving yourself into the... The ZA uh, community, which is amazing. Thank you so much. Tell hey, your Titan friends. Titan Reaper We're joined today. No, Titan Reaper joined last night. Yeah, he, Close enough. He called me the Embalmer. <laughs> yes, my, I know my, he did. My title. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. But yeah. Anyways, hello Titan Reaper, and uh, thanks for everybody yeah, listening man. in. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, thanks, we'll guys. And yeah, and uh, guys hold on. Thanks. Hold on, hold on. And thanks a lot, Foxy, for joining us. It was really good having someone from from... Oh, from this side of the equator as well. Yes, I mean. from the southern hemisphere. Yeah. Is are you are, are you from the yeah. southern hemisphere? Yeah. Yeah, Brazil's in the south, right? No, it's both. Is it... It's sort of between there. There's there's the the, equ the equator moves between, through. Brazil. Okay. Foxy, are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm are just listening with... because. <laughs> Are you in I, northern or the southern hemisphere? I'm sorry, I, I had a cut in your... I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> Are you in the northern or in the southern hemisphere? Uh, I'm so bad at geography. Um... <laughs> oh, what, what's your state? Um, my state... My but... state is Sao Paulo. Uh, Sao Paulo. I think that's in the south. Um, um, 
We just we just want to clarify something because if yeah. you're in the summer, southern hemisphere, you're the first guy we podcasted with that is international fur that lives on the same side of the entire planet than us. Yep, yeah, he's from the southern hemisphere apparently. Cool. Woo. Yes. Yay! Yay! So you. <laughs> yay! <laughs> yeah. Because you everybody, um, it's to you. everybody else is from the oh. states or from Europe or from this. Yeah, this, um, oh. this place called South Africa. <laughs> yeah. um, nice. Foxy, Foxy, anyone you want to have a shout out to? Like maybe if they want to listen later on, or if you want to have um, them. Okay, I want to send a shout out to the Regal Free Fox that watched me uh, just a while back while we were talking. Thank you for watching, and thank you all, all of you listening. And to I'm gonna send a shout out now to the to our listeners and viewers. Thank you for listening, and I'm sorry for for saying uh, for believing in a rumor <laughs> no, no, about no, Jay Naylor right. doing uh, dust art. But uh, again, uh, I want to say th thank you so much for listening, and please, uh, uh, if you want, uh, watch my page in in Perfinity, take a listen to my songs, send positive feedbacks or negative, if correct, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's it. I mean, it was good knowing you all and it's good to know that people from out there is interested in our partying little country down here <laughs> <laughs> that's only me yeah. <laughs> sex drugs and carnival <laughs> sex yeah. drugs and carnival <laughs> Yay! that's excellent Not yeah um I just want to, for those of you still listening um, next week Sunday we're going to have Potter Roo on uh, he just had to uh, what did he have to do again? He had to actually have a podcast of his own because a guy was flying out to somewhere else. Um, I think from NPR, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll have him on next week, Sunday. And then the weekend after that, we're going to have a guy from Northern Ireland. We're just waiting to uh, confirm with him. And uh, yeah, so uh, thank you again for listening. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Fox T, for coming on with us. Uh, Semi short notice. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So, yeah. Cool beans. Bye-bye. Yeah, See you guys around. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye. -bye.